everybody. Uh, Peter of England here again, giving you a update on um, re-movement, um, Freeman Legal Services, and we are back. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about is the subject of taxation. Uh, for many of you in the United Kingdom, that will be uh, HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, and for those in the United States, it's the IRS, which is the Inland Revenue Service. Now, many people have um, speculated on whether you should pay taxes and where you, whether you have a, a legal obligation. For example, my very good friend Simon Spaniard on his uh, site, White Rabbit Trust, um, had a, uh, a conflagration with someone from the Inland Revenue. I think it was called Once Upon a Time in Bankruptcy, if you want to look at that video. Now, on that video, uh, after considerable pressure, the individual he was uh, talking to, one of the uh, revenue officers, still could not or would not point to a piece of legislation showing or proving that Simon had to pay income tax or tax. Now, what I maintain to you all now is that if you pay income tax of any persuasion, whichever schedule you're paying within schedule A or B or C or D, then you are supporting war. How do I come to this conclusion? Well, every time there has been a need for taxation or revenue increase, it's always been on the basis that a war is required to be paid for. For example, in the United Kingdom, income tax is a tax that was brought in for only one year. It was brought in just before 1815, before the Napoleonic Wars. And it was brought in solely to pay for the war against um, Napoleon. It's the only piece of legislation on the UK's legislative, le legislative agenda that has to be renewed every single year um, in Parliament. And if it isn't renewed, it is no more. Now, what is tax? Tax is a social contract between you and those who govern you um, in order for you to be protected in return for you paying taxation. But is it lawful and is it legal? Um, wars are fought by governments or monarchies who want more for themselves which necessarily gives less for you. If we look at the history of income tax uh, and say pay, PAYE in the United Kingdom, uh, what you'll find is um, for the income tax, um, there is no legislation which says you must pay. There is no act of parliament, because they knew that it would probably be so unpopular it would never get through. For other people, maybe those who are self-employed, who, or who earn over, say, let's say, £100,000 sterling a year, there's something called PAYE, or pay as you earn. This is a tax that's collected off you by the employer. Is that legal? Well, I'm going to show you that both taxes are illegal, they're unlawful, and you have no right to pay for them, or pay to them. Um, before we continue on to showing you some evidence of this on screen on the HMRC website, uh, I'd like to touch on PAYE. Now, PAYE was actually introduced into the United Kingdom at the time of the Second World War. Why was it introduced? Well, it was introduced to raise more revenue because wars are costly and bankers need pay. 1943, the Chancellor um, of the Exchequer to Winston Churchill, uh, a guy called Sir Kingsley Wood, um, was of the opinion that following the war, taxation would have to be reduced, not only for political reasons, but also for social uh, economic reasons. However, he was persuaded with various meetings with um, uh, John Maynard Keynes, who was one of the principal architects the following year for the secret Bretton Woods Agreement, to change his mind and change his tune, and to, in fact, put a proposition to Parliament uh, advocating um, PAYE, whereby the employer would become the tax in, uh, inspector and confiscate money at source instead of the usual procedure where it was collected either every year or every few weeks. So, what happened? PAYE was to be introduced into Parliament, and on the 21st of September, the day of the equinox, 1943, when 
Sir Kingsley Wood was about to announce to Parliament the, the bill, he mysteriously died. Now, there's no record of why he died, but our sources say it was not of natural causes. His address might be some giveaway as to why and how he died. He was living at what's called 12 uh, Buckingham Palace mansions. And, uh, you know, you can understand who the landlord there was. So, uh, our sources say that he was either prepared to uh, make uh, a, a declaration that it, it didn't need to be um, levied, or that in fact he was going to uh, uh, advocate to Parliament that it should not go ahead. And so he was pulled out of the way, and then um, it was, uh, it's history now because it's on the books. So, let's go and find out about PAYE and income tax, and then I'll carry on with a little bit about the United States. So let me show you on the screen here, on the computer, something about your friendly HM Revenue and Customs website. Here you've got the website here, and also you have Find A4. This is SA100, which is a principal tax return. So if we move that out of the way for a moment, we'll see on the tax return that there is something quite there's the, there's the standard There's the standard tax form, which you can see, important information about how to complete it. And we'll skip through all of this jargon and nonsense, right? And we'll take you to something that the taxman says you only really have to make a declaration that you've been truthful. Um, now, here it says, look, declaration. I declare that the information I have given on this tax return on any supplementary pages is correct and complete to the best of my knowledge and belief. Hmm? But what it then goes on to ask you to confirm is the following. Now, this is an oath. This puts you very squarely and firmly in the box of perjury in a court of law. Without this undertaking here... It's just a declaration. But with this here and your signature, you are now firmly in the land of criminal statute law. I understand that I may have to pay financial penalties and face prosecution if I give false information. You have now agreed to this. Not only have you agreed to complete it, you've also agreed that if you make any mistakes or they think you have... You're out, of the, you're out of the park. So, let's get rid of that. And now let's look at the legality of the situation in the first place. We actually have here something called self-assessment, the legal framework and the main contents. These are all the self-assessment forms. And what we'll find here is if you go into the search engine here and look for legislation on PAYE, you'll find none. Uh, I might be proven wrong in a day or two when I actually phone up uh, HMRC and ask for the PAYE legislation, but as far as I can gather, it was never, ever brought into statute law, and it was never passed in Parliament. Therefore, it doesn't exist, it's unlawful, and it's just based on a presumption. Let's look at their notes. SALF 202, self-assessment tax returns. These things should be of the utmost importance to any of you who wish not to maybe pay tax in the future. Um, and I'll show you for why. Look at this. The legal framework. Self-assessment gives the responsibility for creating the correct legal tax charge to the taxpayer. Very important. Let's carry on. How can they charge you? Only if you file and complete a tax return. There has never ever been a case brought before a magistrate's court, a high court or the senior courts of justice without the judge or HMRC being in possession of a signed um, self-assessment form or a signed tax form. That is either in the United States or in the UK. So, what does it say? Let's look at it. A legal charge to tax is created by the receipt of a completed self-assessment or in HMRC calculation cases, 
by the issue of the notice. Now the HMRC calculation cases only come about after they've received a form from you. The due date for payment, etc, etc, etc. And that is the main piece of legislation that you should be um, concerned about, or that piece of writing. Only by your hand can you put the noose around your own neck. Taxes Management Act, 1970. Okay, this is where we are. 1970, TMA, Part 2, Income Tax, Section 8. Return of Income. Have we got this? What does it say on Section uh, Section 8? 1, 2, 3, 4. Does it say a statutory or compulsory requirement? It does not. It says any person may be required. Any person may be required by a notice. Any person may be. It doesn't state compulsorily, like most of the le legislation, that you are in breach or you are obligated or it is the law. There is nothing in any of this section which says that anything other than may. Now what we have here then is uh, section 8, subsection 7. Every return under this section shall include a declaration by the person making the return to the effect that the return is to the best of his knowledge correct and complete. Where does it say that then I understand that I will subject myself to criminal penalties for incorrect information? It doesn't. They kindly leave it out. So what I'm showing to you here is the fact that the Inland Revenue know that it's a scam. There's no legal framework behind it. Not only is there no legal framework behind it for income tax, but there's none also for um, PAYE. Now, we find that the legislation for when Sir Kingsley Wood died um, was never passed through Parliament. But let's go to the United States, for example, at the war. Uh, wars, 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 tax, tax, tax. I need to just refer to some notes on this one because it's a little bit complicated. We're going back to the First World War now, um, just before the outbreak of the First World War. Ask yourself, are these facts now that I'm going to mention to you a part of a coincidence or could there have been some engineering involved? Bear in mind, the United Kingdom, everyone started to pay tax to fund the war and to fund much more for the war, just as it was coming. Had the government nothing better to think about in 1944, a year um, before it ended, um, anything other than raising taxes? Yeah, of course it had other things to concern itself, but the bankers had bigger ideals. Let's go to the United States, okay? Let's go back to World War I. The war to end all wars, we were told, or were told at the time. Um, 16th Amendment in the United States. It was adopted on February, uh, in February 1913, and it gave Congress the legal right for the first time to levy an income tax. It was signed by President Woodrow Wilson, and it allowed for taxation. What we then had is on October the 3rd, that same year, the Revenue Act. That was brought into um, law on October the 3rd. The very next day, they were out collecting taxes. But what happened in this most interesting year too is on December the 23rd, a nice Christmas present, in Congress, 1913, we had the Federal Reserve Act passed. So we've had three very important pieces of legislation. And we've had them all about six months before the outbreak of World War I. A coincidence. World War I. Yeah, incredible. 16 million dead. Over 25 million casualties globally. World War II. All conveniently paid for. Uh, some figures. Between 60 and 80 million dead. 2.5% huh? of the global population wiped out in war. Um, the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights brought in after the, the Second World War so that no more war would be around. 
the, the World Bank sends me briefings every week how we must eliminate world poverty, and they're doing everything in their power to do it. The United States Federal Reserve, if it has its way, this year will put in one trillion dollars into uh, what's called asset purchase to keep the Wall Street white shoe boys floating on their beds of, of feathers. That one trillion alone would end all world poverty and bring medical assistance and food and shelter to all those in need. Why don't they do it? Please. Now, next thing we look at is the populations that died in Russia and China. In China, in that war, between 10 and 20 million people died. In Russia, 20 to 27 million dead. It's incredible. We're coming up to Remembrance Sunday on November the 11th, when all of you are going to be walking around with the little red poppies, and there's going to be a big march on the Cenotaph in London, and the Queen, the Prime Minister, Clegg, uh, Miliband, and all the politicians will be there, uh, with their heads bowed, remembering the war dead. But the Milibands and the Cleggs and the Camerons are the very people at this moment that, if they had their way, would be bombing and levelling Syria, as they did with Iraq, as they did in Afghanistan, are still doing. And the monarchy, of which they all ask you to look up to and provide uh, allegiance to, most of them would be there too if they could. Prince Harry would be there in his helicopter gunship, levelling towns and villages if he could as was Andrew before him, and as was Charles before them, and as was William flying his helicopter. So, it's all a load of bullshit, and I ask you sincerely, if you want to do something about it, join or contact Freeman Legal Services. We will show you categorically how not to pay tax, and it will not get you in trouble. Freeman Legal Services have people behind us now who can help you to help the country, the planet, and let's make a difference. So, what I would say therefore, I think I've covered everything in the notes. There's a lot to go on here. Um, so what I'd say to you now is, don't forget to subscribe. Pass the video on. Um, please get in touch with Freeman Legal Services and join Removement. And above all, if you pay tax, you are equating to the bankers and you're becoming, you're, you are as bad as them because you are funding their war. No excuses. Okay, thank you. I'll speak to you again.